When the second generation Nissan Leaf launched back in late 2017, it came with a brand new 40 kilowatt hour battery pack that offered an EPA approved range of around 241 kilometers per charge. That battery pack, 10 kilowatt hours larger than the battery pack found in the outgoing 2017 first generation Leaf, was like its predecessor, only passively cooled, causing some in the industry me included, to question if Nissan had solved the premature battery aging caused by overheating that so many early first-generation Leafs suffered. At the official launch event in Tokyo, Japan, I and many others who asked were told by Nissan's engineering elite that we shouldn't worry, and that it now had a new battery chemistry and cell design for this vehicle that meant problems of the past wouldn't resurface. Additionally, engineers reiterated, Nissan's new battery pack design didn't need the active liquid cooling or even active air cooling that the majority of other electric cars out there on the market use today to keep their battery packs cool. Fast forward a few months and with the Nissan Leaf rolling out in Europe, we started to hear stories of a problem that's now known as RapidGate. These 40 kilowatt hour Leafs would happily charge on a rapid charging station once at fully advertised speed. But try and charge more than once at a rapid charging station on a given day, on a road trip, and unless you were super careful about your driving in between those charging stations, you'd see the car restrict rapid charging speed to a fraction of what it theoretically should be. This in turn made what should have been a 30 or 40 minute rapid charging session into a 90 or longer minute recharging stop that was anything but rapid, something which eventually saw Nissan get told off by the UK Advertising Standards Authority for misleading advertising after owners complained their cars weren't actually charging as fast as Nissan ads suggested they could. Initially, Nissan played the problem down, stating that the car was protecting its battery pack to ensure long life and optimum performance. And then it rolled out a new software update for affected cars in Europe, tweaking the battery management system that was causing the slowdown and making higher speed charging possible. At the same time, all new 2018 Nissan Leafs leaving the factory were programmed with this new software update, and that was globally. At the time, customers in other markets wondered if they too would get the update, but mysteriously, only European customers received it for their cars. In North America, customers who were suffering similar issues to their European compatriots were left with the original crippled software, making it only practical to rapid charge once on a long distance trip without planning in extra hours for charging at each stop. Interestingly, however, while the update wasn't rolled out to existing cars, Nissan did change the software at the factory for all new Leafs, as it did in the European market, meaning only those who purchased their 2018 Leafs early on remained affected with this problem. But that's about to change with the news that Nissan has quietly rolled in an improved battery management software, allegedly fixing the Rapigate problem for North American customers. Released through Nissan's July 18th service bulletin with the classification EL19-018 reference NTB19-056 and title Nissan Leaf lithium-ion battery will not quick charge, technicians are instructed to apply the update to customers' cars if the customer complains of slow speed quick charging, or they complain that the car cannot rapid charge at the same high speed for several consecutive charging sessions on the same day. I don't know about you, but that sounds a lot like Rapidgate, right? Interestingly, Nissan's bulletin suggests that the issue might affect both 2018 and 2019 Leafs, which means it could be an improvement over the European market battery management update rolled out last year. That's kind of intriguing. As usual, however, this update is made available free of charge to customers under Nissan's warranty. But, and I cannot stress this enough, it isn't a recall. In a recall situation, the dealership will reach out to you to have the update applied to your car. But in this case, you have to actually ask your dealership to apply it. And if I had to guess, I'd say you'd have to complain about the two things that Nissan says you need to complain about in order for the technician to apply the update. Otherwise, they won't. As this is a new update, I've not yet heard of anyone getting it in North America, but I'm sure forums like the My Nissan Leaf Forum, I'll link to it in the show notes, will report when that happens. Is it safe? 
Well, based on European feedback, I've not heard of anyone complaining about premature aging. Take from that what you will. It's great to see Nissan finally bring this long-awaited update to customers outside of Europe, but there is still one vehicle that needs attention, the ENV200. The latest version of this electric minivan uses the same battery pack as the new 40 kilowatt hour Leaf, and we've heard many reports from ENV200 owners that suggest they are suffering from the same issues as the original 2018 Leaf owners, re Rapidgate. He's hoping that Nissan fixes that one too, as ENV 200s need to be able to rapid charge as well. That's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell, and if you'd like to support us and make more of these shows, please do consider sending a dollar or two our way every month through Patreon. Buy us a coffee on Ko-fi or visit our merch store. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, keep evolving.